So we looked at matrix multiplication the other day. We looked for a pattern for a long time and we figured out some things. We figured that not all matrices can be multiplied together. They can only be multiplied together if they're compatible in some sort of way. And we found out that they are if the number of columns of the first matrix is equal to the number of rows in the second matrix. So for adding and subtracting, they have to be exactly the same size. For multiplying, they have to have this middle number the same. So you can multiply them. This is the columns of the first one are the same as the rows in the second one. And then after you've multiplied them, whatever the outside two numbers are, that's going to be the order or the size of your answer. So there's those rules, and these make up the rules for multiplying matrices. Rule number one, the middle dimension. So when you're setting up your multiplication, write out the order. This is a 3 by 2. This is a 2 by 1. Remember, matrices rock. We always put the rows first and the columns second. And if we look at these middle two numbers, they're the same. So because they're the same, we can say, yes, we can multiply those matrices together. But in the second example here, this one is a 2 by 2. This one is a 1 by 3. Those two middle numbers are not the same, so we can't multiply those matrices together. Rule number two, if you can multiply them, the answer will have the dimensions of the outside number. So this first example, which we said we could, this is a 3 by 2, and this is a 2 by 1. So these middle numbers are the same, so we know that we can multiply them. And then our answer is a 3 by 1. Those are your outside dimensions. So we can multiply them since the middle number is the same. And then the size or the order of our answer is always those outside numbers. And finally, the idea of how do we multiply, how do we get those answers? Well, for each element in our answers, it's a combination of multiplying an entire row by an entire column. So if we look at this example, this first 23, I'll do this in green. This first element in our answer, we're going to call the matrix answer M, this is element 1, 1. It comes from row 1 and column 1 of our two matrices that were multiplied together. So if I circle row 1 and column 1, if I turn that and multiply, the 1 gets multiplied by the 7, the 2 gets multiplied by the 8, and then we add them together. So every time you're going to multiply a row by a column, you're going to take that row and sort of turn it into a column so you multiply corresponding elements and then whatever answers you get, you'll add them together. So if we look at, and I'll do this one in blue, this is row 2, column 1. You're going to get that answer by taking row 2, column 1, and putting it together. And if we turn that row, the 3 will get multiplied by the 7. The 4 will get multiplied by the 8. If we add those together, 
we'll get 53. And finally, this one is in row 3, column 1. So to get that answer, you're going to take row 3, multiply it by column 1. The 5 will multiply the 7. The 6 will multiply the 8. And add them together. And you'll get 83. So we've sort of color-coded this. But that's the idea. And if you think of the position of each element in your answer, it's going to tell you which rows and which columns need to be multiplied together to get that answer. So here's just a couple extra examples of which matrices you could put together and ones that you could not. So I'm going to get you to put all these together now into these answers. So see which ones you can multiply together. And once you figure out you can multiply them together, multiply them by hand. And I'll put the answers up in a bit. So there's the answer for the first one. So you can check. There is the answer to B. So there are the rest of your answers. Find the values of P and Q. 2, 3, P, Q, multiplied by 1, 4, 2, P, is equal to 0, 9, 11, 8. Well, if you take row 1 and column 1, it needs to equal 0. So if I do that, I'll have 2 times 1 plus 2 times p equals 0. And this way, you only have one equation with one thing you don't know. If you solve for p here, you'll get p is equal to negative 1. Same thing with q. You could have found Q with row 2, column 1, because that would need to equal 11. And so if you did 3 times 1 plus Q times 2 equals 11, you would get Q is equal to 4. And then plugging the rest in, you could just have that to check. So some math words that you probably haven't heard of because we don't use them very often in regular math classes is one of them is commutative, which means that you can, if you can do something one way, and regular multiplication is commutative. 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. But for matrices, a times b is not the same as b times a. 
in our examples that we just did, we found out A times B was possible, but B times A wasn't possible. So we have some laws of matrix multiplication. And this is what happens with any kind of new system that you're working with. When you're working with adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing and those kind of things with a new system, you have to find out what are the rules for the new system. And a lot of the rules end up being similar to other rules that you've learned in the past, but some of them are new and different. For example, the first one, A times B is not the same as B times A. So things that you would have done in the past where it didn't matter the order, now the order matters. A second, so commutative is switching things around with multiplication and they're the, still the same. Associative is deciding what you do first. It doesn't change the order. So with A times B times C, you could do the A times B first, or you could do the B times C first. But you couldn't multiply A times C, because that would be using this. Distribution is a word that you've heard before and used a fair bit. That means if you were adding two things inside the brackets, you could do that first. You could add B plus C first. Or you could decide to multiply A times B and A times C and then add them. Now, knowing how much work multiplication is, compared to adding and subtracting, I would highly recommend in three that you add them first before you multiply, so you only have to multiply once. We've learned about the identity. Remember that identity I showed you where it was a square matrix with all zeros except the diagonal was ones? That's called the identity matrix. And in systems, when we say that there is a multiplicative identity, that means there's a matrix where if you multiply it by that, it's equal to itself. So if I have a matrix and I multiply it by the identity matrix, it doesn't change the answer. If we want to see an example of that, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 6, this is the 3 by 2. If I multiply it by this 2 by 2, the middle numbers are the same. So I can multiply these. And look what happens. The first row times the first column. Well, the second number gets multiplied out by the 0. The first number is a 2. If I take to find row 1, column 2, same thing. This will be a 3. If I take row 2, column 1, and multiply those, I'm going to get a 4, and then a 5, and then a 1. And finally, if I take row 3, column 2, and multiply those together, I'm going to get a 6. That's the identity matrix. And multiplying by that doesn't change the answer. Notice that the identity matrix in the front of this one we just erase whoa whoa there we go if we wanted to find out what matrix would have to go in front here to do the same thing since this is a 3 by 2, the identity matrix in the front would have to be a 3 by 3. So it's not the same identity matrix in the front and the back to make it the, s the same answer. But there exists an identity matrix which you can multiply that's not going to change the answer. What if you put two in front of one? Would that be doubled? Then everything would get doubled, yes. Because having twos instead of the ones would be the same as putting a two out in front as a scalar. Yeah. 
And so when you have that scalar out in front, that would multiply each element by 2, which when would then multiply your final answer by 2. And number 5, we haven't dealt with yet, but will become very important, is there exists a multiplicative inverse. In other words, when you multiply by the inverse, it makes the identity matrix. And that's going to become important because in matrices there's no dividing. So you can't divide with matrices, but you can multiply by something to make it equal to 1. We're going to find out though that some matrices don't have inverses, so that's going to be problematic. So I already handed out the sheet for homework questions.